How's it going, Teal Boys? It is week two, and not only do we have our second game of the season, we have our second conference game of the season on the road at Pitt. The Panthers are playing in their first game. Uh, we're favored to win it, although overall-wise, they are the better team. Um, A-plus on offense. A little bit worrisome. That seems like they have some strong weapons, but they haven't played yet this season. We have. We, we know a few of our weaknesses. We know what to change, so hopefully we can play all right. I don't like the fact that our turnover differential is already minus two one game in. Uh, that, that could spell disaster for us on the season, but maybe we can uh, dial that back towards zero. The defense played well, very well, in fact, last game. They just couldn't quite hold on to the ball when they had chances to create turnovers. So, uh, I don't know, if we just fix the catching for our secondary, we could be really, really dangerous. Now, I set a goal on the last episode that if you guys got 100 likes on it within the first day, which is pretty aggressive, and you guys managed to get to that. So I'm going to go ahead and offer the same goal this time around, except we're going to up that to 110 likes again in the first day. I'm calling that 24 hours. And if you guys can manage that, then we'll go three videos in three days. Now we've got some recruiting to do just a little bit, and I'm curious to see where we're standing with a lot of the players on our board. I think that it's probably wise to offer a couple of scholarships this week, um, but let's just go ahead and see where we're standing with the great players on the uh, on the board oh my gosh joe rogers the kicker we're the only uh people looking at him so 85 overall kicker that's great news starting to uh make inroads there how about ira daniel the strong safety we're losing 745 a week on him we can only give him 700 um the other teams did offer scholarships though so realistically we could be gaining five points a week um because they got that 50 bonus let's go ahead this is such a risky play but it's an 82 overall strong safety so we're gonna go for it we're gonna offer him a scholarship and give him 700 points this week i know that's like almost all of our points to give but uh it'll get us maybe onto the the radar of this kid and see if we can slowly climb our way back in uh and knock on the door i don't like our odds all that much but it's worth the shot mike shelby though 80 overall corner we're jumping up towards usc who has all or has already offered him a scholarship so we'll give mike the scholarship offer looking at aaron jenkins similar situation man these these high overall players are getting their scholarship offers really really quickly from uh from the schools that we're fighting with so this is uh this is kind of interesting donald singletary losing 645 to alabama and Auburn is gaining there. I honestly think that this guard we could pick up. Uh, we just don't have enough points. Uh, we're going to give him a scholarship offer, and I'm sure that I can find 700 points. Um, Logan Smith, we don't necessarily need to give him points right now or, or a crazy amount. So this week, I'm going to take out, uh, what, 250 from him. That'll free up some to give to Donald because, uh, I mean... Ali, if we could just have a class full of ridiculously good uh, players, that would be incredible. Kellen Bell, 78 overall athlete. This guy kind of looks like he would be a monster defensive end. His coverage isn't really good, but 81 power move, 75 block shedding, 83 strength, slow speed, high acceleration. Uh, I would take a defensive lineman, and it looks like we have a chance maybe to jump up in there so we can free up some points for a scholarship from him and we'll take a few points away from Anthony Moore as well to give both of them scholarships again giving these scholarships early means that we don't have to worry about finding the points later in the year and just going down this list it looks like so many of these players we're going to be in a really really good spot to pick them up so again we'll just be slowly pulling away points so that we can give scholarship offers to guys and maybe give points to a few guys that we really like um but just overall, like if we just look at the points that we're losing per week against some of these uh, players or against some of the other teams, it really does look like we are capable of picking them all up. It's just, you know, how good is our points management going to be this season? I don't think that I'm the best at that, but um, I mean, we're in a spot where anybody that we choose to go after, we should be able to compete with. So with that recruiting done... We kind of already know what was happening in our top 25. Not a whole lot of crazy losses. 
Uh, some ranked teams will play each other. LSU and South Carolina play. Georgia will play Oklahoma. That's a big out-of-conference matchup between the current number seven and number 13 teams. Um, both of them 1-0, it looks like. A lot of FCS teams playing. Um, and we're number 26. So this is a massive game for us against Pitt. It's a conference game. If we start the season 2-0 in conference, that would be fantastic. In fact, I think our first three games might be conference matchups. So the quicker we can get our conference wins out of the way, the, the better. And the quicker we get ranked, the better as well. It's going to look better for us uh, getting XP-wise as well as trying to pick up recruits. So let's not dilly-dally. Let's get into this one. Pitt has some cool uniforms. So I'm excited for that. And we're going to start the season with our uh, away game, our first away game of the year in the all-white uniforms. 95 overall for Pitt to R90. They've got a 99 offense. Of course they do. Oh, their defense not quite as good. But definitely they have the advantage. Now they have these cool uniforms. Uh, Steel City ones are pretty cool as well. They have some cool alternates, but I just really like uh, the, the standard pit uniforms. I, I think they look fantastic, so we're going to allow them to wear their standard homes. The top players for this uh, Pit Panthers squad are uh, Jay Addison, the 97 overall wide receiver. Their quarterback is 94 overall, and they've got another quarterback, probably the backup, who's 83 overall. So, so Yellen in Beville. Um, if we injure one, I guess the other one should be able to step up and fill the shoes pretty easily. So maybe good news that they have a lot of depth at quarterback. It means that their, you know, overall depth is, is great, but not spread out between a bunch of positions. Who knows? It is though a rainy night game here at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. A lot of Pitt fans in attendance, really packing it in for this uh, this rainy one. Surprised it's so cold, considering we're week two of the season, but I don't think that'll affect us. We've played well in snow games. We do lose the toss, tails fails, and we're going to be starting with the football. 11 miles an hour of win today. Well, Fountain is back to return. I forgot to put uh, Marquise Jackson in. So hopefully there's no problems there. It is a fieldable kick. The blocking is pretty solid. If Jackson was in, I think we'd take that a lot further, but uh, you know, I'm not the best at remembering to do those sorts of things. We're gonna come out to open up this drive with a halfback dive to CJ Beasley. We didn't uh, run as well as I would have hoped early in the game the last time out, but this one's working pretty well. Good six yard pickup on first down. We also threw uh, two interceptions on our first two drives to start last game. So we'll try to avoid that as well. Looking for CJ and the running back has the first down on our opening drive. If we just go back and forth between these two plays, I won't be too upset. Linebackers showing pressure at the gap we want to run to. We're going to show confidence and run straight at him anyways. We'll take three yards. Could have been a bit more, but uh, three is enough. Second and seven, we will step back to pass again. Feeling some pressure. I'm going to dump it off to Logan Malden, who caught it kind of in a weird spot and only got a yard out of the play. So we've got a third down to contend with here. Again, we will go to the air on this down, and Logan Malden is open. Just, uh, I mean, such a great target to find. He's got enough for the first down on that one. Part of me really wants to try our flea flicker again, so we're going to start incorporating some fake flies into our running game as that was good cj pulled down with the horse collar but got six yards before that and we'll look to see on the tight end cross if we can find one of dj johnson or logan malden or if we can get hit as we're throwing that one pinballed around before hitting the ground a little bit scary so we've got another third down to deal with we'll go with the empty backfield and hope that we can find somebody open as over the middle we have Tyson Mobley and uh, another first down continuing to drive pretty well on this uh, first attempt of the game. And I've come out in the flea flicker. I like the way we these they're, they're lined up. Oh no, they're bringing pressure though. We got an audible out of this one. It would be foolish to run this play. <laughs> so instead, we'll see if we can find somebody open early. And hope that this works. There's DJ Johnson getting some stiff arm cheese inside the 10. There's a first and goal, 25 yards as we punish the aggressiveness of the pit defense. 
I do really run a run that flea flicker successfully, but it'd just be stupid to run it in a situation like that. So instead, we'll hand it off, and CJ Beasley can bounce around the tacklers a little bit and find the end zone. A great opening drive for the offense. Pitt's defense not their strongest suit, and we make them pay. That was a 10-play drive. As this is going to be a touchback, so we can probably... No, I was expecting to not have to worry about it, but they bring it out and we made them pay. They're inside their own 20 now. All right, so this is going to be weird. They have a good wide receiver. They have two good quarterbacks. I'm going to hope that this decision pays off as they just run up the middle for eight yards on first down. But what I want to do in this game is continue to bring pressure and just try to make this quarterback feel a little bit uncomfortable. As it looks like this is going to be a big running game. And Sidney McRae gets there for the four-yard loss. And we've got him in the third down. I'm curious to see if... Uh, oh my gosh, a, a mid-screen. Okay, not the play I would have expected. It doesn't work. I was going to say I'm curious to see how good their wide receivers are. But their play calling isn't that great. So the defense comes out. Does what they did last game. And continues to just get stops. Three and outs. Uh for them all over the place and now we can try to return this punt i'm expecting good field position almost no matter what as johnson has a lot of space avoiding tacklers and getting us to the 40 yard line to start our second drive let's try a little spider 2y banana looking for logan malden on this first down and he's not open and i didn't pass it soon enough that's a play that we need to make quick reads on and we get sacked a loss of seven the offensive line just didn't quite have it, so it's second in a mile, and they're bringing pressure again outside the pocket. X is open. Can we get set to make the throw? We can. It's Tyson Mobley, and he's going to be inside the 10 for our second first and goal of the game. So a great start for us so far. We're going to try an interesting run, hand it off to Beasley, and see if the blocking's there. We tried to follow the blockers. Uh, safety got in there. Only a two-yard rush. See if we can find somebody through the air on this second and goal as... Oh, I don't like it. Maybe Logan Malden. He does come down with it. It is three yards, but he had to run towards the ball to avoid that one getting picked off. Well, we've got a third and goal from the four. Nearing the end of the first quarter to try and score another touchdown. We'll go read option. Grayson's going to be able to keep it. Is the blocking? There it is. Oh, the corner is not able to squeeze in in time, and Grayson has an easy time finding the end zone the second time for the offense in this first quarter. Uh, Pitt, you got to find an answer soon. Oregon narrowly avoids an upset against an unranked Virginia, so the number three team starts this season 1-0. And with another kickoff here, Frederick should see this get just into the end zone. Curious, they will bring it out again. Kale Mackey with a great run down the field again, pinning these guys inside their own 20 for the second drive in a row. Pitt tried to run a bunch on the first drive of the game. I'll expect them to go to the air. I mean, you have a great quarterback. You have two of them. Why are you not passing the ball more? And <laughs> Maybe that's why. Oh my gosh, quarterback found his man on like that post, but he couldn't haul it in. I'm not sure if that was because the defensive back forced the incompletion or what, but it forces a second and 10, and we're going to try to bring a blitz as they'll go over the middle, but we're there with Diggs to get the stop and force a third and seven. And that's going to be enough to end the first quarter. So Pitt at risk of going three and out again. We could potentially really open this one up, up 14-0 at the end of one. They went with a screen last time in this position. They're going to actually hand the ball off. And maybe got a half a yard. Sidney McRae there for it. Fourth and six. Pitt, what are you doing? Jackson's back to return again. Absolutely expecting another big one. We'll see if the blocking's good. Just need to set the edge for him. And there's a lot of space to get towards the corner. He has the speed. He gets those guys to bite. And once again, great field position starting at their 40. So Pitt, if we score here, is going to be really nervous about the rest of this game. We'll step back to pass because Grayson's been doing great so far. And tough one over the middle. There's Tyson Mobley who catches it, holds onto it through the contact, and gets us 13 yards. This could be one of the most efficient games that our offense has been a part of so far. 
in all three plus two games, uh, the three seasons plus two games that we've taken part of. And I'm going to go ahead and knock on wood because uh, I don't want to accidentally jinx us on that one. A lot of pressure on that left side of the field. Let's go with the safe throw over the middle to Logan Malden for a first down inside the 15. Oh my gosh, we're cruising right now. This is one that I'm not sure is going to work. It's a play that I've created. I call it the tackle zone because typically we would see a guard pulling here. For us, it's the tackle pulling. And honestly, it worked pretty well. We get five yards out of the play. I'm worried about the edge not holding, but if we can hand it off quick enough, it doesn't seem like it'll be a problem. So we've got a second and five from the seven yard line. We're going to try a counter. And yeah, here you can see the guard is the one that's pulling um, and he sets the edge for us, and we got forward for a yard, but this is not an easy third down inside the 10. Really gonna hope that this one works. We'll step back to pass. They're bringing some pressure. Tough throw off the back foot. Didn't get my feet set, so it's incomplete. Fourth and four, and we're gonna take the points. This field goal will make it a three-score game. It's not optimal, but the kick is good. 17-0 is a pretty solid score, and it's a little bit better than 14-0. So kicking into the wind now, Frederick, I don't think we'll get it near the goal line. Yeah, four-yard line is where it'll be fielded. And Kale Mackey with another good run down the field, but it's Franklin getting him down. And once again, they're like barely at the 20. So let's see if the defense is really on fire, trying to get another stop. This is a run up the middle. Charles Steele got to the man who gets some stiff arm cheese for five yards. And we'll get a little bit risky here with a safety blitz on second five. Hoping to contain, they step back to pass it over the middle. Ooh. Well, I missed a chance at a pick, but the quarterback missed his man, so it's third down. If they go with a draw play or a screen on this one, I'm going to be very concerned. Third and five, they do step back to pass, and... Okay. Reed has the pick. Does he have the speed? No, it's not going to be a pick six, but what are they doing? Plus one on the turnover department on the day, and Roger Reed has us in a great spot to extend this lead one more time. It's just, I get so surprised when we get those interceptions because so often we drop the easy ones, but Roger holds on to that. And oh my gosh, I almost gave it right back to him. That was a terrible decision. We lost three yards. I think we might be lucky that that wasn't a pick six. I threw that one about a year too late, so didn't give Malden a chance to pick up anything. Looks like they want to bring pressure when I want to run, so we're going to go to the air. And we'll see if we can make anything of this. The pressure is coming really quick. Y is open. A was open. Probably should have given it to Y, but he picks up a block. It's DJ Johnson, the tight end, doing it. And it frees up Grayson for a scramble into the end zone to make it 24 to nothing. How good of a block is that? Just enough to throw him off. And the other linebacker can't get there in time. So 219 left in the first half. They do get the ball to start the third quarter, but... If their offense can't produce, I'm not sure it'll matter. Um, they do finally get across to the 30-yard line on a return, but, I mean, are we far enough ahead that it doesn't matter at this point? We'll be expecting passes pretty predominantly on this drive as that works really well. Diggs can't get the tackle. Stokes has to pick him up after 24 yards. And I just don't like it when we press, and I think that was part of the problem. Again, bringing some pressure, not enough to get to the quarterback, but he threw it for a bad route that only gets two. And Pitts can take their first time out with two minutes left. Last two minutes here, we're going to go keep it in the man, but we're in the nickel package now, and Reed got beat. I can't be too mad because he got an interception for us earlier, but this is going to hurt our chances at a shutout pretty bad. We're bringing a blitz on this first down, hoping that we can get to them in time. Over the middle, there's nothing, but they've got a guy out towards the edge who steps out of bounds, probably on accident after only a pickup at two. And this might be a mistake with how good our defensive line has been this season so far, but we're going to go to a three-man rush, try to get some pressure as they go over the middle, and Mason Shelton's there to stop them. It's third down. They have the wind at their back, so they're definitely in field goal range, but the question at this point becomes... Can we get the stop? <laughs> I got absolutely demolished by that little double move the wide receiver put on us. He gets the first down and they take their second timeout. My ankles are absolutely shattered after the wide receiver did that to us. And they're going to run it on this first down. And we do eventually get the stop. Minute and 24. They're uh, 
not taking their time out here. Interesting decision. We might start taking our timeouts as I want to have a chance to score again. A minute left now. It's another handoff. Plenty of space to work with, and he gets into the end zone. Oh, we can't give up that much yardage. Thankfully, we didn't have to take a timeout. We've got a minute and two to try to answer back. 24-7 now. Uh, they're going to go for this, so we're going to commit a penalty. It will get them a little bit closer, so hopefully that doesn't hurt us, but I can't be in a field goal block and stop that. This is really risky. We're bringing the pressure, hoping for the best. As they do step back to pass, Steele trying to get to the quarterback. Does hit him as he's throwing, but he's got a man open. They go for two. It's 24-8. Well, we need to answer back. Ready to return for the second time in this game, but Marquise Jackson, <laughs> oh goodness, no shot at that one. The wind pushes it out of the back of the end zone, so we'll see if the offense can get it done. Not going to lie, I'm tempted to try a flea flicker. We'll see if uh, the situation arises for now. We'll just continue to pass. Grayson having a pretty solid game so far. Finds Logan Malden for a first down. That'll stop the clock temporarily. And we'll look to throw again with 58 seconds. Pressure kind of there. B is maybe open. Bed good, thankfully. Oh, man, I was late to throw that. Thought he was going to be able to get back to it, but it's thankfully just incomplete. They're not playing very aggressive here. Marquise Jackson could potentially burn them if we have time to get the throw off. And we do get the throw off, but he can't hold on through the contact. That's just a freshman failing in a big moment. They didn't have uh, a safety back there protecting, so I thought maybe we would have a chance, but uh, doesn't seem to work out. Third down, we'll see. Can we convert this? Can we scramble for it? Oh, plenty of space in front of us. Grayson has way more than the first down, and we get out, out of bounds, picking up 17 along the way. Going with the deep whip on this first down in the route. The first time we throw it works to bed good. We'll have to take our first time out as he did catch it, but not how we typically expect it. It's enough for nine yards, and it has us knocking on the door of field goal range. I'm not sure where exactly that is. But I like the odds. I'm going to send Jackson on a fade. I don't know if he has the speed to really burn his man, but back of the end zone. Can't come down with it. That needed to be thrown all the way to the back, and maybe he had a chance. Third and one. We've got 30 seconds to go. We're sending Tyson Mobley on the flea flicker. I don't expect them to bring a crazy amount of pressure. Hopefully we have time to get the pass off and throwing it up. Uh-oh. That one's almost picked off. It's fourth and one. I don't know if I take the field goal or go for this. Well, this is going to get the stadium pretty raucous, but we're going to go for it. I don't like how much time there is. We have the wind coming at us, so I'm not sure if we could pick up the required yards, but over the middle, no. Logan Ball did the diving catch, held onto it through the contact. What on earth? This guy's an absolute animal, and with time ticking down, 15 seconds to go, we just get rid of that one as we're getting hit. We had a guy open, couldn't find it. 13 seconds now. We still have two timeouts, but not sure if we have enough time to run a bunch of plays. There's potentially Bedgood, who can't hold on through the contact. Nine seconds left, third and ten. See what we can do on this one. Trying to get them in a weird spot. Over the middle, we have Logan Malden. Five seconds, four seconds. Timeout taken. Maybe we have time to run a play. This is risky. I'm not in love with the idea, but we're going to run an option. I want a touchdown more than anything. Grayson's going to be able to keep it. And clock hit zero. That is so frustrating. It, you just didn't hit the ground soon enough. So waste of a drive. Bad clock management for me. I can admit that. If he hit the ground sooner, if they tackled him quicker, we could have got the timeout off. But as it stands, up 24-8, giving Pitt the ball uh, into the third quarter. I feel like we could do really well, but the defense needs to get a stop here. Otherwise, a bunch of our effort uh, is going to be wasted. And let's just hope they can continue to be solid. Really only gave up uh, points on that last drive. Really only gave up yards on the last drive. So first and 10 to start the third quarter. After the touchback, we're bringing pressure. You better believe it. They bring a man in motion. We need to get in there, and we do. Just that. It's a loss of four. Don't try that option against us, Pitt. It's not going to work. We've held them to 76 yards so far on the game, which is incredible. As they're going to go with an option again, and they're going to lose another yard. They're lucky it wasn't more. It's turned a mile now. 
Hoping that we don't give up too much here on this third down. They have a man wide open. Of course they do. They get 19 yards. Our man coverage is so dookie sometimes. You can't get burned that bad. It's just not going to work. They're running the option again. This time they do get the pitch out. And even with nobody out there, they only pick up five yards. That's pretty good. All right. Another second down. What can we do? They step back to pass. Over the middle, they've got a guy. He holds on to it. Another first down as they cross midfield. We need to stop on this drive or it's going to get dangerous. This one is a run. Sidney McRae misses the tackle. Baker can't fully get him. It's Kale Mackey that eventually has to come in and pull him down. And we need something to slow these guys down. Their hurry up has been doing damage. That's going to help a ton. A false start will back them up five yards. It'll give us a chance to sub. And it gives us a chance to get the stop. Hoping that the defense does well on this one. It would be great. Can we get to the run? Kale Mackey diving. Upends the running back and forces a third down. That was a tough one. It's equally impressive because Mackey's the most tired. Oh my gosh, we had a chance to stop him. Hit Daniel Carter at the line, but he broke the tackle. Got another first down. We're about to give up as many yards on this drive as we did the entire first half which is pretty disastrous. Uh, they threw that one backwards and their running back stepped out of bounds. So they lost six yards on the play. Second and 16 now. Backup linebacker in and kill in. As they go to the air, uh, digs a little bit too slow to get there and they just continue to have big chunk yardage plays. Our secondary just keeps getting dusted on these and it doesn't help that the running game is doing well. There's a fumble. Oh my gosh. The lineman with the awareness to pick that one up. How massive would it have been if we managed to grab our second takeaway of the game? So second and seven. They step back to pass again. And we've got them in a third and seven. So what can we do here? Just trying to look to stop the pass to pick this up. They put the man in motion. Could we see a screen here? I hope not. They won't step back to screen. And yeah, over the middle. Uh, I'm never going to be able to guard that properly. There's two guys on a cross. If I choose one, they throw to the other. So the coverage just isn't there. Maybe should have been in the man, but our man coverage gets burned there as well. And Pitt scores the touchdown. Just a difficult situation on that drive and on that play specifically. But now we get the chance for a return. The wind was going against them, which means it's a very returnable ball for Marquise Jackson. He's gone. I don't see how they're going to catch him in a foot race with 41. He might actually do it. Shoved out of bounds, but we're starting the drive inside the red zone, so I don't mind too much. We better score a touchdown on this drive. There's no excuse with this good of field position. The only worry for me is that it'll have our defense a little bit too tired because they were just on the field for a long time and they need to get some rest. So we're going to open up and run and hope that we don't score too quickly. Halfback dive this time out. Offensive line continues to get a great push. And the good news is Pitt's defense has been on the field a lot this game. First and goal. We're going to look to the air. I don't know what button I hit. Oh my gosh. We were looking for McDonald, who I think might be a, a defense or an offensive lineman. No pick though. And now second and goal from the six. We're going to just get back to running. I'm not so sure. I feel comfortable passing in this situation. I do feel comfortable with CJ Beasley running a yard shy of the goal line there. Send him bring in JJ Barr and run the fullback dive. It's not guaranteed when Barr comes in, but it's pretty likely they do stack up on the line. JJ, oh, great push from our offensive line. Makes that incredibly easy. And we're going to go for two here. They went for two earlier in the game, so I want to match that. Maybe not the wisest decision, but could work pretty well especially if they don't cover grace and we're able to just walk into the end zone at 32 15 more than doubled up on the score right now so two minutes left in the third quarter they're going to be worried about time if the defense can get us one more good stop i would feel confident that our offense can finish the game off and throw the dagger at them just need to see the defense actually wake up here and stop the pass Pitt has kind of woken up and realized how good their passing game can be. So hopefully they don't realize that anymore. Bringing pressure, forcing him to throw it away immediately. Oh man, that pressure got in there quick and Joey Yellen just had to get rid of it. Don't give the quarterback any chance to burn you through the air and he's not going to be able to burn you through the air. This one over the middle. Ooh, Charles Steele, maybe a chance to get there. 
Nowhere near his receiver that time. What can we do? Third down. They step back to pass again. They ran a screen, and that's not going to go anywhere. Just a foolish mistake. It's fourth down, and that should be the stop. So Jackson has had some pretty solid returns this game. Can he get another punt uh, across midfield? Can he maybe score? It's going to be fieldable. The blocking not quite there early. Can he run away? Oh my gosh, 41 is the guy who stopped us from scoring the kick return touchdown. He stopped that one from becoming big as well. Let's take this one up the middle. First and 10. Giving it to CJ. The blocking, okay. Does a great job of pushing forward to get that three yards. Maybe not the wisest decision, but we're going to go to the air on this one. I feel the pressure. I was late throwing it. Bedgood running back to the ball. Smart decision to avoid the pressure, and he makes the catch, but he might be injured. He was slow to get up after that one, and he's not in the formation this time around, so hopefully nothing too serious if he is injured. He'll hand it off that time for only a yard, and he's got back spasms, so he will be back in the game, but we might just let him rest. I don't know if his services are necessary at this point. Outside the pocket... B is wide open. Of course, it's Mobley. He breaks the tackle, and that's going to be a touchdown. Tyson Mobley goes 34 yards. Grayson's first passing touchdown of the game. He's got a couple on the ground, but finally gets there through the air. We are really opening this one up. 39-15 to 15 at the end of the third quarter. So we'll be able to kick this ball off with the wind at our back for one final time. Again, we'll be with the wind in front of us, and they'll have the wind at their back for the whole fourth quarter. Thankfully, I don't think it'll matter too much in this game. We're going to be in this 3-3-5 nickel, I think, for most of the rest of the game. It's going to prevent us from stopping the run, but if they run, it's foolish. So, I'm not too worried about it. Might still try to bring some pressure, though, and... Well, I guess we'll maybe dial that up to start the fourth quarter, because that's where we're headed. With a massive lead, we've only given up two touchdowns. The defense has been phenomenal. And we've managed to hold on to the ball as well. So can we finish it off as strong as we have for the first three quarters? There will definitely be a sense of urgency among the Pitts offense. If we can get the pressure there, that'd be great. We can't quite do it in time. Quarterback finds his man with the pressure coming and gets the first down. And we'll try to run with a little bit of this man as they're going to step back to pass and throw Stokes. Just got burned on the route. Gave up another first down. Joey Yellen having a solid game since the interception. Isn't world beating, but doing well. And he's got his man downfield. He breaks the tackle. Pits in the end zone. Oh, man. They got us right back. That took almost no time off the clock. Almost up to 200 passing yards on the day for Yellen. And, man, we got burned badly on that one. Well, they're going to go for two again here. It's been a battle of that all game long, and this one's going to be a run. We got there in time. It's Kale Mackey bringing the blitz, and it gets the stop as number six Stanford are defending national championship or champions down a touchdown to UCLA in the fourth quarter. Uh, they've come out in the onside formation. We weren't ready for it, so hands team not on the field. I don't want to waste the time out getting them out there. Hopefully that doesn't burn us, and yeah, DJ Johnson easily gets the grab on that one we've got good field position let's start to burn this clock it's tempting to try some trick plays in this spot but i want to walk out of here with a really good win especially since we should be getting ranked and maybe it'll allow our backs to rack up a few more yards bring jackson in motion as we do hand off the ball and oh no cj beasley got a yard but took one heck of a shot there Ooh, that looked like it hurt that's going to leave us with a third and long as we'll look to bomb one on him here. X could be wide open. It's Tyson Mobley. He doesn't have the speed and the ball's not thrown far enough downfield. So fourth and eight. I, we Honestly, we might go for this. Uh, I feel like maybe we should. It would be pretty massive. Instead, what we're going to do is just try to cough and corner him on this one. Wind coming at us. Keeping it low. Will it get the bounce? He muffs the punt. And they do field it, but... Oh, man, that's risky. Inside their own 25, and we almost got really lucky there. We're up quite a bit here. Four minutes to go. Can we contain them? It's been rough so far. That's a man wide open. That's going to be likely a first down. Just about second in inches. That does keep the clock moving. 
And they've really been utilizing this hurry up quite a bit. We're going to try to bring pressure on this first down over the middle. They've got a man. It's just enough for the for the first down. They needed inches. They got a yard. Uh, and they got a guy going crazy back there. I'm going to continue to try to bring weird looks against these guys. First down. Shelton trying to get pressure. Not going to be there. They do pick up another, and they're nearing midfield, so they have really figured out their offense, and they're definitely playing like a 99 overall offense now. And the question is going to be, can we slow it down? The corner blitz will it get there in time. All the time in the world for that man. That's a block in the back on Mackey. He was there to get the stop. Shelton really hit him out of bounds, but they should not have gotten 16 yards there. Incredibly frustrating. I want to throw the kitchen sink at him right here, but we can't afford to bring that much pressure. Although I don't know if it would have mattered. We could have rushed nine, and they still are going to get a first down every time, it seems. Can we get this corner blitz to work this time? Pressure nowhere near. Corner of the end zone. All too easy for Jordan Addison. 26 yards. They're destroying our coverage all of a sudden. Joey Yellen has turned into a monster first-round quarterback, apparently. And this one is all of a sudden going to be a 10-point game. They've got a middle linebacker in this formation, which to me means they're going to run it. I'm not going to allow that. It is a pass. They get it off, and they found their man who gets into the end zone. He was honestly pretty close to not being in as he gets uh, negative, not a number average on his yards per catch, but 10-point game with 320 left. They're going to take a look at this. I don't know if they're looking the spot of the ball, whether or not that was a catch. Uh, definitely a catch, but... I don't know if that ball crossed the plane. If there's a better angle. What do they say? The ruling on the field stands. I'm going to take another look at that. So we've got the pylon cam. He catches the ball. There is where you say that he completes the catch. The ball is not over the plane. The ball never go. I don't think that he had that. I, from where he completes the catch... I mean, he has to, I don't know, maybe you call it where he's got control and you give him the forward progress, but from where his foot hits the ground, that is awfully close. Maybe right there he has it. So they just barely are able to recover that one, and they're going to go for the onside kick again. 3.20 left. Williams is able to field it this time, and we're able to burn a few seconds off the clock, and those could be precious. As uh, Malcolm Williams, that's our freshman wide receiver. So let's hope the offense can do a little bit more on this drive. A first down could be enough to win the game. They're bringing pressure. They know that we're going to be running the ball. Can we do it successfully? Oh, my gosh. Fumbled the ball. Rashad Howard picks it up, and then he took a trip to the moon. What on earth happened there? CJ Beasley has to be able to hold on to that one. Uh, lucky we still have possession of the ball. We need to get Pitt to start using their timeouts, but that requires first downs to do so. CJ giving him the handoff again. Gets us a third and four. We're going to run it. This is four down territory for us. It's still a two-score game. So even if we fail here and they score the touchdown, it's not over for us. But third and four, we will run it up the middle. That's the first down. He fumbled the ball again. Oh, my gosh. We just barely held on to it. JJ Barr ends up coming up with the you know, recovery. And this is absolutely terrifying. Why can you not hold on to this, CJ? We're going to have to continue to trust you. But, oh man, Pitt is really knocking that ball free. Second timeout taken for the Panthers. A minute and 51 left. And this might not be the best answer to our fumble woes, but we're going to give it to Marquise Jackson on the fly sweep. He's got some blocks. The spin move didn't do quite enough, but... Gets positive yards, forces them to take their final timeout. And at this point, we're 7-10 on our third downs. I don't expect to get this one. CJ up the middle. Almost got it done. It's fourth and inches. The clock's moving, and we're going to go for this. It'll be a fullback dive to potentially win the game. JJ Barr has had pretty solid hands. Oh, my gosh. He took an absolute rocket of a shot, but caught the first down just barely. And we could come out and kneel this one down. Oh, my gosh. I honestly thought we were going to blow them out by, like, 50 points the way that this game started. They managed to get it way too close. And now we take the knee. And that's going to be all she wrote. I don't think we have to run another play. 
and it feels good. We get our second win of the season. Second game in a row, I think. We come out and are able to use the victory formation, which is great news. We're now only minus one in the turnover differential, but that was just a solid, solid game all around. Defense struggled late. I think it might have been a fatigue issue to a certain extent, but uh, offense did pretty solid. Grayson had another good game. I'm feeling confident about this team. That was a 99 overall offense that we faced, and we held them to uh, a pretty low amount of points, all things considered. 29 at the end of the day. They picked up most of that in the fourth quarter. Oh my goodness, Cincinnati lost to an FCS team, uh, the Midwest one that I imagine, just based on the colors, I think they might have uh, modeled it after Montana, but 27-24, it goes to overtime. It looks like Cincinnati uh, was held to either a field goal in single overtime and uh, Montana scores a touchdown or it goes in double overtime and they both just are settling for field goals regardless I mean, the number 19 team in the country losing to an FCS team is a pretty big deal. In terms of our game, we slaughtered them in time of possession. We win the turnover battle. They did end up passing for more than us, uh, which is kind of a shame. We were holding them so well, but we kept them to, again, 34 rushing yards. We barely put up over 100. We got the first down game. And our players of the game, Grayson McCall, I think for the second time in a row. This time for us on defense, though, Roger Reed tackle for loss and an interception and that interception was massive so again we improved a 2-0 and and we're gonna get ranked after this i expect it to go up quite a bit we're gonna have to play nc state though i think they at least have one win they might be 2-0 and they slaughtered us last year we're gonna be looking for revenge and we're gonna be looking to stay ranked the disrespect we only move up one spot we were in 26th before last game our victory only gets us up to 25th we are ranked and we'll be able to jump up quite a bit if we beat NC State. They're up to 12th, but, uh, you know, I guess it's good for the recruits. I can't be mad about being ranked in general. I just want to be higher and higher because it helps our uh, championship contender ranking with the recruits. But this should be a very, very fun game for us. We actually are the higher overall team this time around. Oh my gosh, they created at least three turnovers in their first game. Lee Course is going to be in their corner. I think that's a mistake. We're 2-0. and We're looking strong. We have the better offense and overall, they only have a B offense this time around. They must have lost a ton of talent. Our defense should be able to shut them down. If, if our offense can get points, I, I feel really confident about this game. In our top 25, I think LSU might have lost, but a lot of wins for... Uh, the top guys, USC plays Washington this upcoming week. That's a big one. Obviously, we play NC State. Georgia lost to Oklahoma, so the Sooners get the better there in a close one, 41-37. Georgia now has to play a ranked South Carolina, uh, and that South Carolina team beat LSU, who drops. Did they drop out, or did we just miss it? Am I blind? Yeah, I'm blind as a bat. LSU drops from 4 to 11 as they're 1-1. One one. Uh, that was a close one, but they do fall to South Carolina. Um, what teams dropped out? Texas A&M and Cincinnati. So somebody jumped in front of us, and it must have been Michigan State. You know what? They beat Bama. They beat Bama. They deserve it. It was a ranked team in front of us. Uh, they were probably sitting somewhere just behind us, maybe 27th, so I can't be too mad about it. We get ranked, we're gonna start to get XP for that and it'll help us with the recruiting. And if we keep winning, we're gonna stay ranked. Unfortunately though, that's gonna do it for this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to subscribe. It's free to do, it means a lot to me, helps the channel grow. And again, I'm setting a goal for you guys this time out, 125 likes in a day, and we'll go back to back to back videos to start this season. And while you're down there liking and subscribing, of course, you can head to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links for my Twitter and our community Discord. And of course, there's a link to the College Football Revamped mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. And you know what? I've said this before. I think it holds true. I think this is content that your grandparents would love. So next time you go visit them or next time you call them, which you should do both of those, Get them hooked on this content. They, they've got a lot of time. They want to know what you enjoy. Show it to them. Grandma loves this. Grandpa loves it for sure. And then you guys have something to bond over. <laughs> Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Teal Boys. 
and wherever you are. Have a good night or have a good morning. We'll see you later. Adios.